Like the stuff on her website is hundreds of dollars sometimes. I think there was stuff in the thousands of dollars. Oh, and like, the Christmas. I remember there definitely was like a Christmas. There's like yes, just some weird random Christmas yes. assortment of things. sandals today because it's very hot and if, so now i just got raw dogs out on the podcast <laughs> so don't look at I, the amount of times i've used the word <laughs> raw dog this last week are what are you guys talking about at work and it, it's funny because you think you obviously hear the term raw dog yeah. and i know what you're thinking of course sexual yeah. of yeah. course but actually one of my friends is going kind of going through something right now and i was asking him you know like are you taking notes or are you like thinking about thinking through this heavy, difficult conversation you're about to be having? Uh Um, And he's like, no, I'm just going to raw dog it. (laughs) And I was like, well, that couldn't be me, but um, I'm so interested and looking forward to hearing how it goes. I love that for you guys. Um, But I... You and I don't raw dog any conversation. Sometimes I do just find it along the way. I don't. But I don't... I have notes. Come with notes prepared. I... Just did you just pull a hair out of your mouth? It was a cat hair. Yuck. It is well, yeah, it's kind of yuck. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's um, yucky. But yeah, I don't know. Could not be me, yeah, I guess. But I also hi. Thanks Hello, for welcome coming. to the show. Uh, this is there's a lot to unpack here. Something I'd like to unpack real quick, actually. Sure. If you refer to season one, episode two, I believe, um, at the four twenty sixty nine mark, um, <laughs> there was a time uh-huh. we were talking about drinks, fruity drinks. Uh huh. Um, and I remember when we went and see, went to go see the Barbie movie and <laughs> yes. I, Mickey ordered the Barbie so, spectacular. What was it called? What, do you, I don't remember yeah, what so it was. So there's a local movie theater here Oh, it's so not, I, that is like the thing where you, you it's big seats and you, you just, order food yeah, you and they bring food. you stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so they have a full bar there. Um, and they had a special cocktail menu yeah. out for Bobby. all of the, Bobby. for Bobby, for Bobby <laughs> and Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah. And so they had this this drink i think it was just called malibu barbie i think it was too i think it was like coconut yeah i love it was like essentially a cosmo yeah but with i don't remember but it was delicious there, a, was yeah, like, there was cranberry juice and you know like a flavored vodka yeah. it was really good um yeah it was flavored yeah it was flavored vodka. yeah but anyways it was. it was a pink fruity drink yeah. um and mickey got one and of course i wanted one i wanted yeah. to partake in the fun festivities yes. <laughs> And so <laughs> it's just Mickey and I sitting there. Um, yeah. And there's just like a row. There's only like four chairs in each row. Yeah. Very nice. Um, and another woman comes in. Yeah. And sits by herself next to Mickey. Yeah. I think she was um, waiting for her friends. You no, know, she was. Friend. But yeah. they hadn't got there yet. And so yeah. our drinks arrived before her friends get there. Mm-hmm. And the um, waitress, like waiter, the, the person, person who was like running the drinks. Yeah. yeah. She brought them up and gave mickey hers and then started to give it to me and then gave it to the woman next to mickey she was like very and, flustered and confused well after yeah and then you had to be like i can't remember if she was like oh i didn't order that or well so what happened she came up and she started to hand it to you like you could see on her face that she was working through like the person who told me to run these drinks said <laughs> that it was going to seats like whatever like a and b but there's a man sitting there, so surely it's not that. And so there's this other woman who's like dressed in all pink, like me, and like, oh, they must have just gotten confused. And so you could see her kind of like, uh, 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 and then she handed the drink to the woman sitting next to me, and was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was about to hand it to him. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, that is his drink. It was and she my drink. Immediately, beat red. She. Me too. <laughs> right. Thank red. God the theater was dark because I, I I don't even know how I responded. I don't she, even remember what I said or how I responded. She literally slapped her hand over her mouth and was like, oh my god, I'm so. Yeah, sorry. we didn't see her again the rest of the movie. Movie. No. Um, but <laughs> also, thing. how I, I wonder on uh, that because that woman with the bowl that's the only thing like we so rarely go to the movie theaters, <laughs> yeah. And like normally, if we go, it's, it'll be for like a big movie or like yeah. if I want to go see if you want to go see something, something in IMAX special yeah. or um, but like it just never fails. And like, for instance, like when we went and saw Harry Potter, the Deathly Hollows part two, when we were literally like, this is how ingrained <laughs> this is in my memory, <laughs> like how long ago did that movie come out? And Go Baby, ahead. Tell me why I was thinking the exact same fucking thing. I because was like, I know that he's going to shade me, but I'm going to bring burned. it up. No, because <laughs> we should bring it up because it's so burned. I used to go to the movies once a week when I was a child. Wow. And I don't know. Really? Oh, yeah. Especially during the summer and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like summer blockbuster. That was like the whole like okay. whole thing. Me and my friends, me and my buds would go and we'd get um, so cute. McDonald's after we go take our shirts off and go play basketball. <laughs> and, uh, 
go in the front of the house That's in the middle of summer, so hot as fuck, cute. be sweaty, and then go jump in the pool. But yeah, no. Deathly Hallows. Yeah. Burned into your brain. What was happening? It was a family, right? Or, or so, small? Yeah. So this is the thing. I feel like it's important to be clear that even though we are child free by choice, it's not that we like fucking hate kids not at all, or think that people shouldn't be allowed to have kids in public. However, it does really push my buttons when people bring very, very small children to places that are not set up for kids to yeah. do things that kids normally do, you know? We watched a TikTok the other day about how fucking weird it is that people will bring like babies and toddlers to like breweries and bars and stuff. Like literally don't. Like, yeah, this space, it's, just, it's not for your unless kids. Unless it's specifically. There are, there are lots of other places that are yeah. either like neutral or specifically for kids that you can still hang out with your friends, you know, that you can like still have connection and community, but just like not in a place that's very obviously not for fucking children. Yeah. And so like when people bring little, little kids to movies, pushes my buttons like a because that's difficult for a toddler because like you're essentially asking them to do something that they're not wired to do which is like sit still and be quiet and entertain themselves for two hours with subject matter that's like not interesting yes. to them literally you know? the two things they excel at um yeah <laughs> and it's also frustrating to me because i'm like listen like i came here because like i made the choice to watch this yes. movie here rather than stream it at my house wait, yeah because like the sound and the lights and it's like all big and cool you know what i'm saying it's like different yeah, it's, it's like no special. It, is, it is it is special i think going to the movies Yes. Yeah. Like for us anyways, it's like a special thing. And so it's frustrating then when people bring little kids because there was this child that was behind us. I don't know how old they were. I'm assuming they were relatively young because they just sounded... Like, like a toddler. Yeah. Um, but they were like talking and like whining and like being weird. But also they were making the worst fucking mouth noises. I don't know if this kid was like, if they were keeping him quiet oh, by feeding him caramel or something. I but he was just this. like, sorry, if you hate mouth noises, like skip Are past this. Do it? Yeah. Do but it. the whole movie, he was. And no like one should be able to hear that. Ear, no one should be able to hear that. Also, too, like, because I have my own, like, sensory issues, that is, like, one thing that will throw me off Ugh. of a cliff. Like, you and I have talked about this before. That, like, I know. If, if you I... try to hug me while you're <laughs> chewing something, I'm like, get off of me. Normally, <laughs> and then to be clear, I don't that. normally do it. No, but... no, but I hate that fucking noise. And so it was just like. Especially right this, in your ear. Yeah, it was all of these things. Oh combined into a really terrible experience and so yeah the lady who sat next to us at the barbie movie was being really rude to the wait staff yeah. and it, it soured the experience a little i won't lie like there's just no reason i have that so vividly i know <laughs> no i thought the same thing but it, well, also too i feel like that was one of the last times that we went to the movies and then COVID happened and it was like well yeah also, you no, know, I honestly. just really don't like spending money at the movies, honestly. Like, um, yeah. I prefer to watch stuff at home in my underpants. It's comfy. I gotta go. Yeah. I have a peanut bladder, too, so I be... Mm -hmm. I go... I am a very hydrated person, though, so, yeah. like, and, Well, and being able my to fault. pause is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyways, let's we're talking about it. something that's completely unrelated to this today. Um, but I thought that we'd just share that with you, because... Why not? Why not? Welcome to the pod, everybody. Um, what are we talking about today? So the thing we are talking about, it's there's a little bit of a story. There's a little bit of a setup for how we got here. Set me up. But I feel like this will be a fun conversation, both for you and I, and hopefully for you guys who are watching and listening, because it's something we've briefly touched on on the channel before, yeah. but not really like fully fleshed out, okay, which let's flesh like, it out. to me is what this space is for. So you and I were just minding our business. We were cuddling this morning in bed, and <laughs> there's a subreddit. Oh, yes. There's a subreddit called Pop Culture Chat. You you and I are in there all the time. I just, I think it's fun. I like, I, the, I like the news. I love the goss. I love the tea. Me too. And there was a thread about like the weirdest celebrity uh, endorsements. Yes. And one of the things on there was Travis Barker partnering with Liquid Death to make. I have so many questions for him. To make a collectible enema kit. <laughs> they and called both it, of us. They called it enema of the state. Which is Hilarious. really funny. Play on words. It's funny. Yes. And also a reference to one of Blink-182's yes. albums. You just learned that today. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to be clear, there's no text. I have listened to the album. I have seen it before. Um, Fake fan. I, Fake I'm not a fan, fan of Blink-182. Like, I'm, as, I'm as big of a fan oh, as Blink-182. I, I like Blink-182. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. Also, Travis does do some incredible things, like on the set and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah he's, he's a great, he's a really talented. I know. Drummer. I would like, I like, I said, so many questions. Yeah. I've, so, anyways, but the point of this episode is that we want to talk about this because he, you, and I both saw this, and we immediately we were like, that tracks. Like, that makes that, sense. Of course, that's a real product. That just makes sense. And also, <laughs> too, promote. as two people who have now are Liquid Death. Yeah. I, I don't want to say. Yeah, I don't want to say fans. Fan we voice? actually bought every single. Flavor. I think we have tried every single flavor now. Some better than others. Yeah. I don't really um, like the Buried Alive. It's not very good. It's not very good. But the the tea, the Arnold Palmy. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the peach 
tea. That one's good too. I love the peach tea. Um, but anyways, so like, yeah. of course, of course, these two things go together. Why would yes. they not be doing enemas with liquid death? Yeah, and I, like we just sort of took it at face value. And like to be clear, it is a joke. It was like a, satire. Yeah, it was like a um like gag product. You know, Actually, but like we had to joke. watch the ad. Yes. To figure that out, and then I was, we were, well, even still, I was like, are they self aware, mm-hmm. or is this like, are yeah. we are uh, as like, the ad uh, went on, it became more like obvious. Yes. But we thought that it was really interesting. I think it's really interesting anyways. Yes. That like we could see a product like that, especially in like the era of goop and like celebrity And some of the stuff the Kardashians we saw in like, the first place too. Okay, yeah, no, for sure. Like that's so dumb that he would promote yes. that, but I'm not at all surprised that they would make that decision. But they really do be doing stuff like that though. Yes. Like no, they, they really had that, do. that whole scene where they went to the, the wellness. wellness spa. And that's mm-hmm. the thing I don't understand with Travis is because like obviously he's doing it to be supportive and like I feel like he would do anything. But I think he does like that stuff though. I think and that's what I because he's vegan. Right? Because also, do you think this is the real question? Yeah. Was it Liquid Death's idea? Like, did they no. come to Travis? No. You think Travis went to? Yes. I think they did too. A hundred percent. Do you think Chris set that up? Yes. I well, sometimes no. I think that's probably old enough that Chris probably didn't set that up. And Travis probably enough? has. It's only from a couple months ago. Wait, you're fucking joking. I thought this was like old, old. No, the Enema thing. It's quite recently. I think we should fact check that real quick. The Enema oh thing is not. Oh my god! I think as of April of this year, April what? of this year, or last year. April. Yeah. Why? Oh, your impression was this was older. Yeah, I thought this was no. like pre Courtney days. I don't. I don't believe so. Mm-hmm. That was really good. I'd like to make sure we're in tune before we. Yeah, know. posted April twenty fifth of twenty twenty three. I told you. Wow. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Do you think Chris had anything? Because I mean, he's Maybe. very much in the. He's in the family now. He's in the fam. Well, okay, and I am curious about this too because obviously, like the way that the ad is presented. It's clear that it's meant to be a joke, right? They do yeah. actually say at the end, like, this is not intended to be no, a real yeah. medical device. Like, don't use this, right? But then also at the same time, you asked me earlier today, like, what what's the deal with that? And I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if Travis is into, like, colonics and the whole, like, recreational yeah. enemas thing. You know, like, that's very much a thing that celebrities do. Gwyneth Paltrow endlessly promotes this. Like, Wait, any... Gwyneth Paltrow actually promotes enemas? Right. or Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Not, like, I don't think that's, like, her main. No, no, no. But, like. <laughs> but, like. The use of recreational enemas and like coffee enemas and all this stuff. Yeah. These are like, it's like uh, integrated pretty efficiently into the like sort of new age wellness culture. It's just like part of the, it's part of the. Yes. Yeah. Like the bicycle somebody, wheel of... somebody that you see carrying around like, I don't know, one of those like rose quartz water bottles or whatever. Probably does enemas. It's like not a far cry that they've probably at least heard of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like all sort of wrapped up into the same. Yeah. It's like a, a pipeline. Isn't you know it what enema- I'm saying? So like, honestly, as a enema ignorant, mm-hmm. are they, is it a medical thing? Like, yes. is it, is it out of medical necessity normally? Or like, yes. I'm just genuinely. Okay. So I know a surprising amount. <laughs> About, Honestly, about enemas. If but, it's not too much, but hear me out. Fill me in. The reason that I know a lot about this is because there was a an episode of another podcast. Um, it's called Stuff You Should Know. If you haven't listened oh, to Stuff okay. You Should Know, by the way, highly recommend. It's like such yeah. wonderful fact based yes. information that like is just kind of like about random stuff. Yeah. And so one of the episodes that they did was a deep dive into like recreational enemas oh. because one of the hosts, I think it was Chuck, um, used to be into colonics. He was like, I used to do this. Can you okay? Where colonics mean colon. Oh. Yeah, like oh, okay. like like recreationally cleansing your colon. Yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to be like super no, 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 yeah, no, I just gen- genuinely these are so many. <laughs> no, I'm happy to talk about. Yeah, it. tell me. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad you watch this podcast now. I um my brain is just filled Phil, with useless information. Get it out. Like get it this. out there on the table. So basically, if you've never had an enema or you don't know what one is, it's essentially the practice of inserting a nozzle through your butthole because that's like the thing you, you get boogers out with for little babies yes but there's but also different. usually like a bag atta- it, it's a whole thing okay okay i yeah. don't really understand like the particulars of like what actually like equipment okay. you use but the it's the process of inserting like essentially like a tube through your anus okay. and into your rectum okay um it's not just like cleaning your butthole okay. it's not just like like if you use a bidet it's not just like sort of cleaning the outside it's actually inserting a tube totally and like, like bypassing in your rectum and like in into the colon essentially okay. Um, because the, the whole point, especially with like, well, with medical enemas, typically they're used if you're like very constipated, if you have like an obstruction. There's like a purpose. Yeah. Like I knew they yes. had like a medical, like there was a purpose yeah. for them. Um, and a, 
a medical enema, you're only supposed to use sterile saline. It's very important oh, okay, okay. that you use like only sterile saline. Yeah, and that also, be... also that it's performed by somebody who is like qualified to do yeah. this, right? Like you can do home enemas, I think. Um, but like there, oh, do you have to have someone do it for you or like, well, if you, especially if you like have, um, a bowel impaction or oh, something, okay, okay. a doctor will do it for you. Yeah. And so you flood a bunch of water inside of your, I think it's your colon. I think it's your small, your like, that makes sense. The, then like little, you're... yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the like S shaped thing. Um, you, you flood a bunch of water yeah. in there and it's very, very uncomfortable. It doesn't sound like, yeah, it, I, it's, it's like if you have to poop, it's basically probably the river, like yeah. you super have to poop, but you have to hold it in there for as long as you can. And then eventually you sort of let it evacuate your bowels. And that's okay. why it's helpful for removing a bowel obstruction okay. because it helps to cleanse all of the material out of there. If you're having a hard so time you're passing like it or cleaning your, so the whole uh, shtick like with like wellness, wellness culture, mm -hmm. like recreational enemas is that it, instead of like going to the hospital or the doctor when you need an enema, you can go to oh. one of these wellness spa places oh, so and they'll do it for you. Oh. Um, or they like sort of provide you with materials and stuff. Some people do them at home. Okay. It is very much a thing that you can do at home too. Like some people use them for other purposes to be clear, like yeah. not everybody who doesn't get an enema from a doctor is doing it because they're doing like a coffee enema. Uh, yeah. But like generally speaking, the like crossover of like wellness culture and, and like needless enemas yeah. is pretty strong. And not that it's yeah. quite the same, but I'm wondering like the, the, the parallel that's coming to mind for me is like dry needling versus acupuncture mm -hmm. versus where like mm -hmm. one of them, like I have to go through my insurance and get like, yes. Whereas like, or I like just... going to physical therapy versus seeing a chiropractor. Uh, yes. Okay. You know, um, and like no shade to yeah. chiropractors, it's fine. And especially if you use one and you like one, like no, that's totally. fine, right? But like those videos on TikTok of the people breaking the doors, <laughs> kill, kill me. Um, I've never been to a chiropractor, but the way you've explained it to me, it's like it's very really much that they really do just be like making noise just for the sake of it. I, but yeah, so it's kind of that, like yeah. the the difference between like. There, there's these two things and okay. it's like sort of similar, right? But like a little but one ideally is being performed by a medical professional and one yeah. um, is like sort of a DIY situation. If you're doing recreational enemas. Mm -hmm. How do you know, like if I'm hungry, I know when I need to eat. Yeah. How do I know when I need an enema? Shit, like, I don't know. I think for some people, they schedule them on a semi-regular basis. Is it something you're supposed I to be think, doing regular? Like, well, because, you're not like, supposed to be doing this at all, to be clear. Also, just to be super clear, it's none of my business what anybody does. Totally. Um, but just for what it's worth, the research does indicate that enemas can very much be dangerous if you're doing them yourself or if you're doing them like, I feel like that through could, not a doctor. Like yeah. you can puncture your, or perforate rather, your essentially like your small intestine and then get sepsis and be very, very sick or die. Like you can die it, from sepsis. Yeah. Yes, it can be incredibly dangerous if you're not doing it correctly or if you're not familiar. And so like, please fucking be careful if you're doing this. Yeah. Like I don't imagine that we have a high crossover in terms of our well, demographic. It's, it's like such but a like, secret. Thing. Yeah. For what it's worth. Um, obviously there's no shame in needing an enema from a medical of professional, course. but if you do want to do one or need to do one at home or whatever, yeah. please be very careful. Please follow the instructions. Cause that can go sideways <laughs> very quickly. I feel like I've learned so much already. And we're like not even done with the episode. We haven't really started even <laughs> talking. Know, we haven't even really started, started talking, talking about, about what like we want to talk about. And stuff. But I guess, yeah, that's so interesting to me. I didn't know. Yeah. You could just, mm -hmm. Cause, and you can do it by yourself, to be clear. You can. Lots of people do. Okay. Which is also part of the concern is that, like, you have to know what you're doing. Because yeah. you can misguide the the tube, essentially. Yeah. I was, like, afraid to do your, your like, shots for, like, birth. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't mm -hmm. imagine. Yeah. But the reason we wanted to talk about it, though, is because, like, you and I both were just kind of immediately like, oh, yeah. Like, that makes that sense. That tracks, that, you know? That's exactly what And, we... like, what a fucking weird thing. Like, where are we at in the world? <laughs> that celebrities promoting enemas that were just like, yeah, you know, but, but like that's really not a far cry from Courtney talking about how quail eggs were going to cure her infertility. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. the producer literally said on the show while they were recording this, like the sale of um, quail eggs is going to like skyrocket now that you said that. Oh, yeah. And like, also, hello. Yeah. Are you people not aware of how irresponsibly you're using your platform? Yeah. I guess um, when Chloe or like, I guess they were promoting Ozempic or something. <gasps> Um, it like yeah. sold out. Yeah. 
Which like, also, let's just be clear. Ozempic is something that is like very much a necessity for diabetic people. No, yeah. And celebrities and rich people are using it as a means of, of weight loss. And it's now being marketed as a weight loss drug. Yeah. Which is creating a shortage for the people who medically who actually need, need it. it. Yes. Like what? Are, like does that the, not infuriate also you? Also, when people talk about like you don't like your power or your your influence. Yes. Like this is literally like I don't I don't understand. Mm. Also, I guess my other question is, and also please what? sound off if you bought one. Yes. But who? Because when I checked, it was out of stock. I know. The surely they only had like a hundred of them. I yeah, that's what right? I'm curious too. Like how many? Like because also it's just a fucking. It was like a hundred and thirty dollars. I yeah, think, it was like right? a it was a tube. The the, the it, it really did look like the booger things. If you've ever seen yeah. when parents. Um, or doctors or whatever, like yeah. squeeze the boogers out of baby's nose. So then my question is, so like, obviously I understand collectibles and collecting things and we love sure. going every time we go thrift shopping, yeah. like there's the, the containers shit. with collectible cards and, yeah. uh, like the, what are those? Uh, the, not the bitmojis, the, uh, oh, Funkos. Funkos. Yeah, yeah. Like people collecting those. Like I understand that I get it, yeah. but like, so the liquid death, you get a, a can of liquid death yeah. and then the tool, Little bulb. the yeah. bulb. Um, but then it also says, do not use this for enemas. Yeah. Do not actually use this for enemas. Yes. So then who's buying this? And we're just holding onto the can and the bulb. Uh, well, or like, honestly, does, though, are we just keeping it in the well, case? Cause it says it's collectible. Yeah. Again, I'm not surprised by that though, because like, first of all, there's a whole sector of the population that are Blink-182 and Travis Barker. That's fair. Like fan people. Right. And like, I wouldn't be surprised by them wanting to own commemorative memorabilia and merch and stuff. But also, like, yeah. let's... Because, <laughs> like, what, does it just sit? Like, where would you... I would, like, I would, like would yeah. you display but, it? like, also, too, like, that's like saying, why would anyone collect anything? That's fair. That is such a good point, Lots actually, Lots of people too. collect stuff that they leave in the case and never use. You know, like... That's fair. There's a whole section of the population that collects, like, vintage toys, oh, you know? And, like, and, and, like figures leaves and them in the package, never plays with them. Yeah, and, like, dolls, they collect actually, them yeah. specifically for the purpose of just totally, looking at them, Totally right? understand. Yeah. But... Like, I, I don't disagree. It's, like, a very niche part of the yeah. population that's probably collecting Travis Barker enema kits, but still, but like, it's like that thing too when they like, do. when like, it's like if, if every celebrity had their own brand of yeah. personal at home enema kit, you know, like you like have a collection of them, you know, like, yes. oh, I have that. I get, what, I get what you're saying. You were enema saying. kit. And like, are people collecting enema stuff or are they collecting Travis Barker stuff? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like who's collecting enema memorabilia? Yeah. Which that's probably a thing, honestly. Honestly, yeah. Vintage I mean, medical equipment. Not I would, that this is vintage, but like lots of people do collect. In like, like 50 years, though. Like, yeah. I wonder yeah. if the Kardashians will still be a thing in 50 years once Chris. Yes. You think so? Yeah. I wonder what state they'll be in. Like, what state their family will be in once oh, Chris. Oh, I thought you meant like geographically, which state will they live in? And I was like, <laughs> No. I don't know what no. like California. No, like, no, like what state? What like, like a state of the you like you know how they would be. Yeah, yeah, how they yeah, would yeah. Be faring what without. state their yes. family will be in? Okay, um, I was so confused. But yeah, getting back onto the the um, health and wellness stuff. Yeah, yeah, I want to talk about goop because yes, Gwyneth know, Paltrow been... is my personal greatest nemesis. What it, the... I, it's a joke when I say that to be clear, but also I'm kind of okay, not okay. kidding. She doesn't know you exist. Yeah, she can still be my nemesis. I still have beef with a celebrity that doesn't know that <laughs> I exist. Which is funny. I, I think it would be fair to say you're not even the only person. No, that feels that everybody way. fucking hates who who fucking likes even, Gwyneth Paltrow. We don't need that. Which is funny too, because she seemed to be the most like unoffensive, like just a person that exists. Money celebrity will do that to you. I, that's the other thing too. Mickey and I were talking about as well. Yeah, is I feel like money ruins stuff. Allow well, yes. But we were talking about this, and I think you said, yeah, that money allows, like, when you have weird one-off ideas yes. as a normie, yes. then it's like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, and then you talk about it for we'll a little bit, and you just that, let though. it go away, and it just kind yes. of goes, whereas yeah. rich people have the means yes. to actually do that stuff. And I can't tell if it's always for the best or for, mm. like, mm -mm. also, you made a really good point, too, earlier today, yeah. um, where you were what? talking about, like, when you are, like, you have fame and all that stuff, and you can't do, like, regular people things. Yes, yes. It's rich people hobbies. Yeah. I'm telling you. Having like, these, oh, these weird niche interests that are just ungodly expensive, yes, it's because they don't yes. have regular fucking hobbies. Because, like, A, they can't. Because, like, Obviously. you know, Gwyneth Paltrow can't fucking hang out at, at Six Flags. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she can't go to Target and, like, fucking fuck around like the rest of us. So like, Something tells me they're not stepping in Target. Well, no. But, like, what you get what I'm saying? Like, the, when the rest of us are doing girl errands, Gwyneth Paltrow can't really girl do that. Errands. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, I think there's also a thing to be said about how money sort of like strips life of its specialness because oh. like, like you and I were just talking about how like 
choosing to spend the money to go to the movies is like a thing, right? Oh. Like it's not something that we're doing often enough, but like because we live on a it's fucking like a normal tr- income. It's like a treat. Yes, yeah. yeah. Or when people go out to a nice dinner or yeah. you take a vacation or you go to a theme you, like, park. You like save up. You like yes. save up and do like, so it. It's has special. More but when you have this like world building amount of money, like Gwyneth Paltrow could start a new country <laughs> with how much fucking money she has. No, literally. Like so many of the celebrities do. If like, she can't, they, the Kardashians definitely Yes, good. yes. But when you have money like that and yeah. you can't do normal stuff and also it's like sucked the the specialness out of like things that are normally special yeah you start to fucking lose it i think you start to lose touch with reality and do these weird ass fucking random ass things like that every make no air. fucking yes sense. yes and then also too well we'll talk about that in a minute but i think like that's an important part of why these things are so weird because mm-hmm. also too when i was on um the podcast with hannah the other day she, okay. was, she was talking about like what happens when you're surrounded by yes men oh and i think this is also that oh i think right? you're so right yes we talk about all this all the, the time like why did nobody yes, yes because all of the people who are in their inner circle probably yes. are being paid to like pump up the you're, volume you're just like paying, well, and i feel like <laughs> yeah. the, the thing that comes about on the show a lot too is like all of their their assistants and stuff like turn into this weird like mm-hmm. you work for me but we're friends role but like we're yes. friends because we work together so much like, and like, like the way you build community around like the people you yes. work with um and yeah. you talk about that too just because like being a social a social a solo a social. you are a social a social <laughs> worker um a solo yeah. private practice yes yeah you don't have uh, co-workers yeah so like you're just you're just on alone. Your own. yeah it's like, the loneliest job yeah. it's so sad. but like at work like very much i am friends with I would say like yeah, friend, you have co-workers, like, yeah, and acquaintances, with, yeah. yeah. And so like you yeah. build a relationship You've out of that through work, yeah. Um, so like when you just surround yourself with a bunch of people you're paying, yes, and they just like be- say yes, absolutely, and also too like they don't really care yeah. about whether this is a good idea or whether this is like good optics necessarily. I guess like, unless getting, it's like your PR person, but like, but, like they care if it will make them money and yeah. they care if it will keep them off of your back probably. So like I think these weird projects get fucking greenlit that turn into the fucking entity that is goop the like drain on our collective <laughs> joy and economy that is fucking goop i and, hate that fucking company i'm and, so i'm gonna die mad about it and and, and no one's gonna thank take you. that away from you because i'm not going to thank you um but the other thing that cracks me up about that too is though mm-hmm. that like when they like i don't doubt it's a lot of work well, like i do have some experience but like i understand how much work it can be to like start a company and start a business oh, and yeah. all that thing no, too for sure yeah but, like also like it just always feels so phony to say like Oh, I worked so hard and I put this Literally on there. I know. Literally like you, don't. you paid a bunch of assistants and yes. people and like you have a whole team. And of as people. it should be, because like also that's too is very much a skill is like finding people. Sure. Yeah, I think like hiring and like building. Like, but like yeah, also when you I have guess. so much money, yeah. that like whether it fails or not is like yes. who gives a shit. You well, know, yes, like because you said something earlier about like the Kardashian card. Um, oh yeah, I didn't know they. Had the a- Kardashians have a string of failed projects because yeah. they just like again, it's the thing of like who cares if it fails? Because then Kim right? started a. Uh, she was trying to be a singer or a actor yeah. Or- yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a. I think it's one singular song that Kim sang. And it's so bad. I don't think I've ever heard it. We'll be listening it's to that so on the way bad. home. I know. I have half a mind to pull it up right now and play it on the Bluetooth because it's well, we'll get copyrighted. copyrighted. Um, it's so bad though. It's it's pretty rough. <sighs> Um, but yeah, there was that, and then obviously there was like Kimoji um, and oh, the video game. Oh, was there a big scandal about that though? That like they took the yes, they stole the art from someone who like they sent pay, it to her or yeah. something. Yeah, which <laughs> yeah, what a surprise. Oh, I totally um, forgot about that. Yeah, and then there was like the Kardashian card, which is a, a debit card or a credit card. Who was it through? Uh, I like, think it was American Express. Don't quote me on that. I don't remember. No, yeah, but, but it was essentially like, like either a they... debit or a credit card that like was by the kardashians i literally don't understand what the purpose of that is literally um and then chloe has had three separate reality tv shows that are like spin-off shows oh she has and not just like the chloe Wait, and chloe courtney has? yeah Which not is- just like chloe and courtney take miami but she had a show um called like it, she was posing in like a martini glass for the thumbnail of it. It was like a talk show, oh. like drinks with Chloe or something. Which is and so- then she had like revenge body after she had her whole weight loss thing, which like, ew. Um, and there was another oh one. Oh God, I think. there's a show. But that, like they've had so many. Yeah. And then Kylie revenge has a body? failed. Yeah. Kylie has a failed reality TV show spinoff that's called like Life of Kylie. And I know entirely too much yeah, about this family. I'm learning so much. Also too, like no shame. I get the thing like starting shows and then like them not working out. Like Yeah, that's fair. Like, yeah. But like um, the no. point that I'm making though is just that like the Kardashians very much do this and yeah. like lots of other celebrities do this where like they start stuff and it fails and like who cares? No, literally. It doesn't like, matter to them because they have endless amounts of money. Yes. Yes. You know? 
I just yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting. I will say though, for <laughs> as much as I dislike Gwyneth Paltrow, she's definitely not that person. Like Goop is largely a very successful business. Is that the only thing she's? Is that like did she just start with that? Or? Um, I don't know. I don't know very much about Gwyneth Paltrow other than Goop. Honestly, I know she has like a spinoff TV show called Love, Sex, and Goop, which is awful. Is that on Netflix or something? Mm-hmm. Or have I you watched, watched a few it? episodes of it while what you is were it out even of town. About? Or it's literally about sex and relationships. She is has it good these, advice like, at least or. Like, uh-huh. it's not the worst advice, but it's that thing when, like, like even the worst people that you know sometimes give good advice, you know? Like, the broken clock <laughs> like is right say, twice a day If you thing. say enough things, like, something, yes, something yeah. will stick. And also, too, I think sometimes, like, if the advice, like, on face value is not the worst, but, like, where it's coming from is yeah. not good. Like, when Girl Define accidentally stumbles into a good take about uh, sex, and you're like, okay, but it's, like, it's still coming yeah. from a fucking and bad also, place, like, though. You didn't mean yeah. for it to have the meaning <laughs> yeah. that it's having, but, like, exactly. you just so and happened. Because also, like, sometimes, too, like, yeah. just things that are genuine generally good yes like people will fight you know yes. yeah um well and i think also the thing where like if you're still uplifting these problematic value systems and like insisting yes. people subscribe to this belief system that's like harmful then like that's great i guess you gave this one specific couple one yes. good piece of advice but generally you're still <laughs> very much no. contributing negatively to like the yes. overall ether you i feel know? like it's like when love is blind when love is blind and nick and vanessa are like mm-hmm. we have three couples that are like <gasps> yes. uh, doing the best and it's out like, of six seasons out of, yes like there's 55 other people whose lives yes. are kind of destroyed but kind of aren't destroyed yeah. you know but like but look at our we got three people rate. yeah like literally no like that's not yeah it's kind of that it's not doing that um my favorite thing though there is a person on tiktok who like every holiday season talks about goops uh holiday oh, must yes. have list. Didn't they have some just it's wild so off bad. the wall they have the most random ass fucking stuff on there and also it's all so expensive this is another big yeah uh, oh, another yes. bone that i have to pick with celebrities it, who have yeah. businesses like this oh, because how much could a banana cost well, yes, that too. But also we were talking about this, that like it is infuriating how many people like, you know, regular ass people who don't have like celebrity amounts of money yeah. probably have really. I just hit my mic so hard that oh, it wow. uh, turned off. That was so weird. It was super uncomfortable. It was to like all so of a sudden quiet. not have you in my ears. I was like, Ugh. I'm right here with you. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. But it's super frustrating, though, to think about how many regular ass people with not celebrity money yeah. probably have really good ideas about businesses. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like could change their lives and like have this really profitable business and work for themselves and all this stuff. Right. Um, but they just don't have the seed money to get started oh, with something yeah, like, like that or uh, like the, um, like patents ability like, to like yes. quit their job and like yes. dedicate that. Cause yes. like, you know, we live in this oppressive capitalist Which bullshit. If we had healthcare, yes, then correct. we would probably be a lot more able to correct. do that but yeah. because when it's but tied to your job, yeah. because it keeps you down yes. and it always all comes it's back to capitalism, yeah, capitalism every single time. Everything. This is why we're the most annoying people on the planet. Yes. Yeah. Um, but when celebrities start businesses like this yes. and like, like, like whatever. If Gwyneth Paltrow is just really excited about health and wellness, right? Like, like genuinely she, enjoys it. Fine, like, she could be providing people. Like, she could have this business oh, model that is okay. like intended to provide regular ass people with an accessible and affordable means to access the things that she claims are very helpful or interesting or or useful for your health. Yeah, right. She start a whole but center. But she fucking whole doesn't. But she doesn't. She literally sells fucking water bottles with a rose quartz crystal inside of them for like eighty five fucking dollars i think it was more than that literally why like the stuff on her website is hundreds of dollars sometimes i think there was stuff in the thousands of dollars oh and like, the christmas i remember there definitely was like a christmas there's yes, like some weird random christmas yes. assortment of things what the fuck man like it just it pisses me the fuck off because these people do have the money and the time and yes, the wherewithal yes. to start these businesses but they do it for stupid shit and then they sell it to other rich people and we also talked about this too i think it's because rich people don't like when the masses can oh, access yes, the things that yes, they're interested yes. in the it's not fun anymore it's not fun anymore when yes everyone, yes yes um well it's like a uh like keeping up with the joneses thing like we're not special if yeah. the average person can look like us or access the things that we do or participate in the hobbies that yes. we do we have to continue and to- so like yeah we're gonna continue to up the ante yes. here you know like now that regular people can afford to to do 
recreational enemas and colonics and all of this stuff, Gwyneth Paltrow said, you know what? I'll do you one better. I'm going to put ozone in my asshole. What does like, that mean? Good, I, baby, I literally don't know. What does that mean? Like, also, they <laughs> find these things. And like, I know. Like, where, like, I, I don't know. I'm always like, everything must have been discovered that could possibly be discovered. No. And like, no. every time. No. Um, and also, again, not that I anticipate a large section of our audience is like hearing that and being like, wow, I want to do that. But just so that you know, the research is like very clear that ozone at at best is a carcinogen um what does that mean ozone like ozone is from like the thing that protects us protects the atmosphere ozone is in like the the gaseous chemical where are they getting this I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't, I don't know how they get but chemicals just, in the first just place. Just to be super clear, it's at at best, it's a carcinogen, and it puts you for an increased risk of cancer. And at worst, it will like actively provoke a lot of really, really shitty health issues if you like purposefully expose your body and especially sensitive parts of your body to this. So like, don't fucking do yes. that. Um, but like, that's what I'm saying though. That like this stuff that she talks about doing, yes. and like the oh, she had an interview. Um, a while ago about how much she loves IV nutrition and all of this stuff. And it's just like a very obvious eating disorder (laughs) that's been repackaged into health and wellness where she basically says that I get all of my nutrition from a fucking IV drip and I just don't have to eat food anymore, which is the most late stage dystopian bullshit that I've ever heard. Like they, you would have so much money that you could literally have a private chef. Yes. You'd have several private chefs. She does probably. you could eat like three, like, you could eat the best the most food beautiful meals. for every meal. Yes. And like probably wouldn't even put a dent. Correct. In any of the money she Not has. Even close. And like. Because also all of that's a tax write off. But it just feels like it feels like like it's not even like I, I can't tell because I can't tell. Are they like buying the bullshit that they're selling? Or, kind of. Probably. But it's like they seem genuine about it. So I'm like, are they selling this because they genuinely do think it will help people? Or like, are this, is this like a like a big gotcha? Well, like, I ah, think- they're so dumb. They'll do it like just to see like, ah, what can I get away with? Let me see how much. I can get them to spend or buy or... Well, I think part of it is that they probably genuinely think this will change people's lives. And if, if, you know, all of the dumb poor people would just invest in their health, um, then they would be happy like me, right? But But then also, I think this is, again, like the rich people thing. When you have like unfettered access to money and resource and privilege that like those sickly thoughts in your brain like the the intrusive mentally ill (sighs) thoughts that all of us have that like a lot of times are dealt with because like we don't have the resources or we have you know safety in our community to be like hey that's actually really unhealthy like you know you shouldn't talk about your body like that or like it's okay for you to eat solid food like all of those things i think go unchecked and so they turn into these people i think who just like really are committed to this like I don't know, like this weird act of like, like uh, intentionally demonstrated privilege. Cause I think that's the other thing about it. Mm-hmm. They may not like explicitly think this. I'm very doubtful that Gwyneth Paltrow is putting this much thought into mm, anything. Probably not. To be quite honest. But go on. Um, go on. But like the implied like the subtext here i think is that like i continue to be special and enjoy my privilege and feel valuable if i can separate myself from poor people we talk about this a lot too especially like art and decor and like things like yes 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 Yes. yeah now i guarantee you i will bet big fucking money (laughs) big money that now that the sad beige everything aesthetic is more attainable and like affordable it's going to shift celebrities are going to start doing more maximum i'm waiting for yeah i'm waiting for it to happen but like maximalism in the way that like regular people cannot afford in this like very opulent like like, rococo kind of like demonstration like like just busy like very like french like uh like french revolution sort of vibes like just needlessly uh camp for the sake like of like the big paintings of yourself, like yes, the, yes. the I'm uh, telling Schitt's, you right Schitt's, now, Schitt's, yes. Creek, it's like that. It's giving that, yes. like yes, it's gonna be like tacky rich, and all of that's oh. gonna circle back around. No, again. not the McMansions. <laughs> yes, or no, what are they called? Yeah, McMansions. McMansions. Um, because celebrities oh. and and the well-to-do, the bourgeoisie really do not like it when the masses can access yes. the things that they yes. think are cool. This is oh. why the Kardashians got their BBLs removed. This is why they're moving back. Did into they get this- them removed? Yeah. They used to be bigger? Yes. Well, they're I think they're slowly trying to move away from this. But like, have you noticed that like like Chloe's weight loss, in my opinion, is a really important thing to pay attention okay. to? Because yes, thin has always been idealized and thin will always be the thing that like is you know held like, over especially if I'm presenting people's yeah, heads. Like um, your your worth. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. But um they did used to be these emblematic figures of mm-hmm. like 
sure we're thin, but we're also curvy, right? Oh, we're also voluptuous. Yes, yes. And like that's very much going away. It got it's so exaggerated to the point that they like looked like wisdom teeth. And now they did. Like the, the proportions were like cartoonish. I see. But like, First I was like wisdom teeth. Yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> um, but like now I think because again, people who are regular people can yeah. afford to like get a BBL and like mm-hmm. save up for these surgeries and stuff. It's not special anymore. So the Kardashians are pivoting. They're setting a whole different standard yeah. for beauty and what aesthetics and like their bodies are supposed to look like because they have the money and the means to say, we don't like this. So we're undoing this very expensive procedure yeah. that a lot of people save for their whole lifetime for and we're doing something else now right you, like yeah. Kim especially like the the Met Gala appearance that she had where she wore Marilyn Monroe's dress oh. very much fucking that in my opinion but what I'm saying though is that she made such a big show out of talking about how much weight that she lost oh, and yeah, how yeah. small she was and how yeah. skinny she had herself. to be yes and like how you know she had to alter her body and all of this stuff like yeah. I, I'm telling you right now oh. in the next 10 to 15 years there is going to be like a return of like what was happening in the 90s yeah that's you know? That's exactly where my mind was yeah. going to. Um, I don't want to use the actual term that people use in the 90s because it's kind of offensive. But if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the like very, you know, square, flat uh, figure thing being. Does the term have to do with a reptile? No, the term had to do with a drug. But yeah, so I, I really feel strongly yeah. that all of that is coming. And like all of it, too, is just a reflection of the way that capitalism runs our fucking lives. Yes. You know, like these we're so annoying. All we do is talk about fucking capitalism. Just always, but like it's true, though. But like when you break it all down, it's I mean, true. Like I'm not wrong. That's what I'm saying. There was a TikTok that we like watched that. the other day. I know. <laughs> that was just sitting at the table yesterday, dinner. We were having a work I dinner, know. lunch. Oh, yeah. And I was like, if anyone else is listening to us around here, we must sound like the biggest fucking boners. The bo- the, yeah, the biggest fucking nerds. Ugh. But yeah, there was a TikTok the other day that was joking about how like you start a conversation with like happy chit chat. And oh, you yes. end a conversation and you're like, that's why capitalism ruins everything, bro. And like, that's literally No, us. for real. And also I was going to say too, <laughs> also the health and wellness have cracked me up too, because yeah. like, wait till they find out about microplastics. Like how but that's we, the thing though is they don't care how are we gonna get like that's the thing too because you make such a good point though too because like if health and wellness were so important and adamant to your mm-hmm. like vision and your goal and helping yes. people and stuff then why are you putting why it behind you, a paywall well and why are you contributing to some of the the worst aspects of climate change like if you really yeah. did care about our general general health and wellness why are you flying your private jet from like one end of Los Angeles to the other. Also, I, or like, why are you doing that? No, for real. You know, like yeah. the reality is that the <laughs> pollution in the ozone and microplastics and yeah. all this stuff far more damaging to our health than anything else could be. I just don't understand. It, it, yeah, it's just kind of rich. Yeah, um, I had to take a brief breath, breath room break, but I'm back. Um, and I thought about something too that I Tell me. wanted to talk oh, about. I had a feeling that would happen um, because those are always the best thoughts. If you want to share with me your product that you found on no, Goop no, no. first, please first. feel free. First. Um, I was just thinking about too the um, <laughs> hopefully this isn't a hot take, but the Emily Mariko thing, the, um, um, the quiet luxury thing. I literally cannot roll my eyes. <laughs> I I don't know how we somehow managed to just go ahead say what you're gonna say. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how like I think we as general people. Because we want to feel cool and accepted yeah. and belong and all the things. It's oh, like everyone. very human, right? I don't care what anyone says. All everyone, of us are susceptible wants, to that. Also, yes. that's like, you know, everybody does that with like fashion or home decor or food or vacation. Like everybody does this in some capacity, you yes, know? Yes, because even like incels who are like, I hate women and stuff still find community with other yep. incels. Like yes, everyone just wants, wants to be accepted and it, yes. included. But I think it is worth having a conversation though yeah. about how we sometimes try to embody the things that the ultra rich um, have access to okay. because we want to feel, you know, uh, I don't know, like approved of. Um, like but, societally approved. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that yeah. Makes sense. Um, but that like, generally speaking, I think it's important that we try to move away from that or just yeah. like be cognizant of that. Cause like the Emily Mariko thing, if you're not aware, Emily Mariko is a creator on TikTok um, who makes food content. She went viral a little while ago for making like a salmon yeah. bowl that people really liked. Um, but she recently got married and uh, shared a lot of her wedding day yeah. weekend and whatever with her TikTok following. And a lot of people were applauding her for being quiet luxury and how aspirational it was what, and it, the whole it, thing, which like quiet luxury is a whole 
whole thing that's like very much steeped in systemic racism and classism and like it's problematic but also there was a lot of people who seemed to be under the impression <laughs> that they're just like a few right choices away from having the amount of Everyone money that Emily always, Mariko yes. has and like that's not true quiet you luxury know? is almost louder than regular like well and quiet luxury is not really a thing you know because it's again the thing of like trying to gatekeep wealth yes. and like class you know because even amongst the rich people they still yes. like they still yes it's it, there's if always you're, someone if you're new money yes. then like Ew, gross. you know it's, it's which giving like, Gatsby like well and also too it's like steeped in anti-blackness yeah. right because it's the yes. idea that like celebrities and people who are ostentatious are like so crass and, yeah. and embarrassing right yeah. um but like us uh generational wealth well people reformed who, like and... yeah the only reason our family has wealth is because we have a long family history of oppressing people literally or enslaving people or participating in really shady labor practices no, on it, yes uh, exploiting people to make our generational wealth like we have so much more class than everybody else and like fucking you you know what i'm saying you can't and, like, make that much money without yes i think it's just important to remember i guess that like it is very normal and okay for us to want to feel accepted, but that we can very much find community um, without trying to embody the things that the ultra rich tell us to embody, yeah. you know, because also, too, that's like allowing these people to sort of force us back into this yeah. vehicle of capitalism, you know, looking at Which groups, sucks. looking through groups catalog and their website just briefly. Yes. It's giving like the way we are about like an air fryer or something. Mm hmm. It feels like if Gwyneth made a website, it's like giving like, um, uh, not Mary Kay, like the pampered chef, the like, <laughs> really? um, but for rich people, for your rich friends, like these are fun items. These are fun items that you can have yeah. in your house, in your life. That'll make you like, they're quirky. Yeah. Little. Like, oh my God. Like, let me tell you about like, like when I meet someone, I'm like, oh, you've never air fried mozzarella sticks. Like, Literally. are you, like, you haven't put a pizza in the air fryer? Like <laughs> you have to buy this. And then if I, it's like that. And then I was like, I'll make my own air fryer yes. and I'll sell it to my friends. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, you know, I get what you're um, saying. Um, yes. So I just stumbled upon these. Also, some of these are giving like very girl defined. Really? I don't know. Like conservative Christian girly? DTF. We're not ashamed to say we wanted help shifting our sex drive into gear. And we also know we're not alone. Everyday stress and anxiety, hormonal fluctu fluctuations and fatigue can all impact female libido and sexual health, which okay. is why we formulated DTF with three oh, key ingredients God. to support healthy sexual function, vitality and mood in women. First up, Libafem registered fenugreek extract which was clinically shown to support healthy sexual arousal and desire in women and provide support for symptoms of menopause next shetavari an adaptogenic herb traditionally used in i'm sorry did I, you just say herb herb uh to support female health and for mood support saffron extract the ingredient in dtf works best when used over time consistency is key with an asterisk yeah these statements have not been evaluated by the fda yeah also too can we talk about the fact that fenugreek and saffron are just regular ass food ingredients that are like common in other cultures yeah. you know this it, feels very much like white people making a spectacle out of things that like are very normal yes. in other cultures and like just because you don't know what spices are yeah doesn't mean gwyneth that everybody else is it's like that thing to that. I, I, I think we saw it on tiktok you know? too but someone called something they made like a food dish mm -hmm. and everyone was like that's just enchiladas or like well, that's no, just, yeah, this like, happened, i can't remember what it was you it know it was um spa water People, people were literally just making agua frescas and, oh, and calling yes. it spa water. Yes. But then also people made cowboy caviar and it was literally just elote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like or, or 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 pico de gallo. Like you just you're just putting a different name on it. Yes. Like it's been. Like, are you okay? Yeah. Just because, like, you haven't discovered the secret to the culinary universe. Which is why I always you say literally everything just is derivative. A thing that brown people have been making for like ever. Yes. You know. Um, no, but it's just like stuff on there, and then like they have yeah. a watch, and then there's like a, a mat for like two thousand dollars. Yeah, these for a sixty <gasps> count. I will say I was surprised at the price for the the supplements. How um, much were they? Because for a sixty count, it was fifty dollars. No, no, it was sixty dollars. It's a dollar a pill, basically. Okay. Um, but it's fifty dollars if you get a subscription. Oh, thank um, God. But also, but also too, that's sixty dollars or fifty dollars a month. Yeah, but also too, then this brings me back to the thing is like. Why would or uh, it might be a hot take, but like, what? what would the underlying causes and symptoms be for this? Like, why would you need like what else is going on in your life too yes. that would maybe yeah. some introspection could be good? That like, why yes. like you'd feel called your, to? Does your fucking partner suck? Yeah. Are you overworked and underappreciated? Are you, Are you overtired? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have no free time? Are you, you know maybe just feeling a little bit depressy about the general state yeah. of affairs? Like, there's three thousand other things that could be affecting somebody's 
uh, libido yeah. in a person who is interested in, and, you know, desires yeah. to be interested in sex. It's like the melatonin thing where I'm like, like, melatonin works great for me. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, you have, like, uh, Mickey, you have to try this. Yes. This melatonin Everybody works so good. It. I, as yeah. soon as I take it, I fall right asleep. Yeah. And like, it, does, it doesn't do jack shit for you. No. No, but also too, you know, like if I'm having a hard time sleeping, I know that it's because I'm probably anxious because I'm not doing a good job at moderating my nighttime routine because yeah. I have probably like a poor work-life balance. Maybe there's some stuff on my mind that I need to talk Maybe about. Maybe scary. I'm like in some pain and I need to go to PT. Yeah. You know, like there's there's other things that I could do other than just telling uh, Pop- these people like you just need to take this take pill this- once a day, twice yes. a day for every month and like literally no. Also, why? If, now that I think about it too, there's three ingredients in that thing and it's a buck a pill. That's annoying. Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And also, like, the thing that also, like, irks me about, especially, like, vitamins and supplements is that there are very much potential interactions that folks could be having between vitamins and supplements and whatever their prescribed yeah. medication is. This happens a lot with antidepressants. Oh, um, oh really? Like, especially, or... I can't remember who I was talking to about this. I think it was our tattoo artist, our friend. Okay. That people who take charcoal supplements. Charcoal? Yes. Charcoal's bad for you, I thought. Or Well, charcoal. So Toothpaste charcoal is bad. Do not buy toothpaste with charcoal in it. Apparently. It can rub the enamel off. Yeah. Okay. Charcoal is yeah. too abrasive for your teeth. And so it puts micro scratches in them. And oh. it's very bad for your teeth, apparently. And for people so with... says the dentist on TikTok anyways. I don't know if that's. And you and me do not have a lot of enamel to work with. No, so. we really don't. <laughs> but uh, charcoal can be a problem okay. in regards to your prescription medications. For those of you who aren't aware, if you end up like accidentally poisoned or something, when you go to the emergency room and they pump your stomach, usually what they do is put charcoal in your stomach because it absorbs all of the shit in there and then you throw it up. It's really horrific. Um, but it effectively yeah. removes all of the poison from your body because it's really good at that, right? Yeah. And so people started this thing oh, like probably like 10 the- years ago with like charcoal face wash and charcoal toothpaste. Oh, is that why there was such a, all of and, a sudden? Like, yes, yeah. Oh. Because the thought was that like if charcoal if is good that, at removing toxins it will remove the toxins from your body and like not there's no toxins in your body that needs to be removed first of all but also um if you're taking charcoal supplements but you're also taking like yeah. antidepressants or like any other medication oh. you can be accidentally be reducing the efficacy of your medication and not know it because you're buying yeah. it from a website like goop who just is telling you that this will change your life right and like yeah. actually it might be contraindicated for the medication that you're on so like why? Why do we need to be selling this stuff? Like it just there's nothing like, no, wrong with why? like regular vitamins and supplements, course, I guess. Like lots of people take them and, and find them very useful. Well, especially you know? like before we have major procedures like vitamin like upping your vitamin C like yeah, yeah, does yeah. help or you But know. also too, like ideally you're checking in with someone who has some kind of license or credential yeah. to evaluate your overall health and say, like, yes, you know, these supplements are safe for you to be on. Like I've yes. looked at what medications you're on and like good to go. Have a great time, you know, but like you don't need to be taking advice from people like <laughs> Yeah. about what you definitively prescriptively need you know it just it fucking irks me because also too like what the fuck does she care what the fuck does she care if she ruins people's lives or, with this or not or even if worse i i guess like if it does something but like i can just imagine that not doing because also i think the thing like the placebo comes into play here too which to be fair placebo is like a real in, thing in a way it's real i i don't you know? disagree with, like yeah and it makes somebody happy yeah. like go off sure but i guess but, just yeah. It just always feels like it's like that fine line of like, it's like snake oil. Yes. For, you know, like, I think I also just take issue with it because somebody like Gwyneth Paltrow, who is earth endingly rich. That's what I'm saying. You've already made your money. money. Yes. You're taking a disproportionate amount of money from people who don't have a lot of money to begin with. Yeah. Um, and then also telling them you need to come back every month and buy more. Yeah. You know, it feels so predatory. Like, could you it just fuck feel- off in your private jet? Can you just fucking hide in your little... Your, your, your health and wellness hut, Gwyneth, and shut the fuck up, please. Like, you, like, do could so you just many leave things. people the fuck alone? Have hobbies. Or, like, again, if you really feel strongly about this, why are you not, like, pioneering this uh, company to be about making health and wellness accessible to the masses? Why are you not helping people to implement these solutions that you claim are so life changing in a way that's more affordable, more accessible, and won't cause people to put themselves in, a, like, a difficult yeah. financial situation? It's not as but, Like, no, you're not doing that because you're fucking money hungry. Makes me so fucking mad. Just like Makes no. me so sad too. Because like also the reality is that like rates of depression and mental illness are continuing to increase, especially mm-hmm. post-pandemic. Post-pandemic anyways. Uh, <laughs> and it's not because people are more uh, susceptible than they ever have been. It's yeah. because like the state of affairs is continuing to decline. You know, like yes. it's harder and harder to afford things, to raise a family, to find community, to find free time and like to find 
health that. and like health insurance, no, you know, everything, like yes. everything is so much harder for like the regular ass people to acquire. Yes. And people like Gwyneth are like, but have you tried buying the $60 supplement? Nah, you don't like, need health no, insurance. You need this. It's you, Gwyneth. It's because of you. People like you are what's fucking up our shit. You know, it makes me so sad. I think too, Amani talked about the post COVID life. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, didn't the Kardashians, aren't, aren't they, weren't they pushing some new MRI? MRI thing that's yep. not an MRI thing. The body scan thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. if that's not just like the peak of like, well, look how healthy we are because we do all these things. Like, no, yes. it's because you have plenty of money to take care of anything that you Correct. could possibly ever need. Yes. For those of you who aren't aware, um, Imani, whose uh, username is Crutches and Spice on TikTok yeah. and Instagram, um, Imani is a content creator, but also um a black disabled person um and talks a lot about like pr and and communication and yeah. um social media relations and all that kind of stuff but also has a lot of really poignant takes like, like information I, like, yeah. I know about disability and health and like you know especially like the pandemic yeah all it ties a lot of, of it together honestly yes yeah. yeah imani does a really great job of tying it all together but imani was talking about how post pandemic yeah post pandemic i know it's been a while now, but like um, this is yeah. an older older video yeah uh, well, I mean, just like in air quotes, because like we're not really post anything like the pandemic is still very much happening. Yeah. Like disabled people especially are still dying. Totally. But like just because we're not affected by it, we're like, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, it's over. And like literally, no, it's not. But they were talking about how what we've seen, especially like historically after like the the Spanish flu influenza and yeah. all that kind of stuff, that there was this renewed fixation with health. And like if you survived the pandemic, you must be genetically superior. Well, how, right. Not how that works. Um, well, and also like this turns into eugenics really quickly. So fast. Right. Yes. Um, and like very obviously and like intentionally oppressing disabled people and like black people um, and people who like, you know, don't occupy the the identity factors that like we as a society deem to be like acceptable yeah. and people like the Kardashians and like, you know, goop and like celebrities at large really doing this like renewed fixation with health and wellness yeah, and all this stuff. Like, first sure of all, it. it starts to really feel like orthorexia core. Um, but second of all, you did not just make a core. Out it of, does though. A, doesn't it? No, it does. I um, never would have put those together. But also it's like sort of reflective of this larger picture that like, you know, this is a thing that people do yeah. um, where we sort of point the finger at disabled and marginalized people and say, like, we are superior and you're the problem. And so, you know, like we, um, you know, if I'm healthy and I survived the pandemic and I'm thin, right, then I'm like fucking better than and you. And like, like I have the, you. and like, as if you have the answers now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's not that's how that works. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it's crazy that we started this conversation talking about enemas. Yeah. I'm so excited that I got to to info dump about what I know I about <laughs> animals and wellness culture. Never knew. When I listened to that episode, I never thought that I would ever talk about that. When did you, how long ago did you listen to that oh, episode? Oh, years ago. And you remembered all of, I guess yeah. not, that's not that crazy to me, but. But also that's like very much how neurodivergent brains work. Yeah, that, that's true. You know? I know. I do be just remembering facts. Mm-hmm. Like we uh, watched Tu Wong Fu last night for the first, or I had not seen it. I had not seen it it's and I felt. so good. I felt so I, I just cannot believe those movies were being made in the 90s. I know. And like. So good. Was everyone just like, missing the point or like it was just such an up- uplifting and all of everyone, all the <laughs> actors and actresses did such a good like. Yeah. Apparently the movie was um, met with like success. Yeah. Like, what was the uh, it did reception? Very, it did pretty well at the box office, but it was pretty contentious yeah there was i mean you know like any movie now that Mm -hmm. uplifts and celebrates queer people yeah there was a lot of you know um, but there was still a lot of like celebration about the whole thing for those of you who aren't aware there's a movie uh called tu wang fu thanks for everything julie newmar (laughs) um and it is such a good i can't believe it's based off of a real like they really did just see that picture Mm -hmm. Yes. Iconic. The person who wrote the script for Statuesque. the movie originally intended it to be um, performed on a stage, like as a musical or something. Oh, really? Yeah. But they decided putting a car on a stage oh, might be rather difficult. That's fair. So they're like, maybe I'll adapt this into a screenplay. Um, but they wrote the script because they saw in a Chinese restaurant in Times Square in New York City, a picture on the wall that yes. said, to Wang Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. It was a picture of herself that yes. had been signed. Julie Newmar signed it. Um, and so they wrote this whole script about these uh, queer people, these 
drag queens, queens essentially yeah. who take a cross country trip to go to a drag queen competition didn't and make they, it very far they meet these like uh, cute little country bumpkins who are so surprisingly progressive and sweet and it's this very cute little like transformation little story i know it was so good but yeah it's starring patrick swayze and wesley snipes and john leguizamo and it is so so good i feel like if you've never seen it you should watch it i feel like too it just like encapsulates like this sat this sad gray beige town yes and they bring just, like, all this color and open up all these people yes and they save I the why the oh the woman i know from her shitty husband but also too the thing that i oh, love the so, most about the whole transformation yes. thing is that it's not like these drag queens came into this town and said all of you should be like us no right? not they at literally all. just empowered these people they just be yourself to, yes to be the versions of themselves <sighs> that they've always wanted to be but yes. they just felt too afraid to be which is like the most beautiful metaphor for what it feels like <sighs> to like come out and really embody yourself as a queer person it was just you know I, it, it was, makes me emotional I I know. It's I love so that good. movie so much. Okay. Um, I feel oh. better about that. Maybe we should if start If you haven't ending. watched it or you haven't watched it in a while, yeah, definitely, definitely go check it out again. It. It's so surprisingly progressive. Don't get me wrong. There's still problematic parts Oh, it's parts still racist. Because it, it was very much made in the 90s. But, yeah. Um, but also, I kind of enjoy uplifting. that. Con like, I still enjoy like going back and like... Like, like remembering consuming how that far content. Come, I yeah, guess. it's yeah. like such a t like That's some of the true. words that are so flippantly used. I'm like, I could never. I know. See that being. Yeah. And as it shouldn't be. Well, like, but thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's um, just amazing the scripts. That were, I know that the were way approved. writing was done. Like what the fuck? But then also still so progressive. But then still so like. Yeah, it was it, like progressive and regressive at the same it's time. So yeah, it's the, like a little time capsule. It is, and that's why it's just crazy <laughs> to me how that exists in this state. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe we'll start ending things that are like sort of bummer conversations with recommendations or something. Oh, I love that. Um, because I think that would be nice. All right. Um, Thank I think you guys that's for joining we're us. Wrap the episode up. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thanks for being here. We love y'all the most. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe um, either on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening on. And then if you leave us five star reviews, it really does help a lot. Yes. So thank you. Thanks. If you like if you, the pod, if you enjoy ta talking about enemas, let us know. <laughs> Sorry, this episode took a turn. Uh, we love you the most. And we'll see you for the next one, though. Bye. Bye.